Hello again, everybody. Jonathan Cantella, your co-pilot business development specialist, and welcome back to our third video in the series focusing on our technical readiness assessment for Microsoft 365 Copilot. And today we have a very special guest joining me, Dan Ortiz. Dan, take it away. Thanks so much, John. My name is Dan Ortiz. I am the director of the Digital Workspace Center of Excellence at Connection, and I'm thrilled to be here. What an exciting subject to bring us together again, John, talking about artificial intelligence, specifically in the lens of Microsoft, with Microsoft 365 Copilot. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, especially with how prominent AI is becoming in everybody's you know day-to-day -day scenarios. And now today we got some very exciting topics to talk about as it relates to Microsoft 365 Copilot, specifically around our services that we have. And just before I get to that summary of the topics we'll be engaging on today, I do wanna just remind everybody that we do have a Q&A available during this webinar. So please feel free to engage the team during this presentation. And with that, going into our topics, everybody. So we're gonna open up with some top concerns with rolling out an AI solution. See if any of these concerns are something that you guys are looking or facing today as you look at your journey into Copilot. We're then gonna focus on our technical readiness assessment, give you a brief overview of what that service entails. And then we're gonna tie it off with our professional services, what we offer beyond the technical readiness assessment to get your environment fully prepared for Microsoft 365 Copilot. And then of course, at the end, we'll just wrap it all up and send you on your way. So with that, Dan, let's open up on the top concerns with rolling out an AI solution. What can you tell me about from what you're hearing uh, from customers that you're having conversations with are the top concerns? Yeah, great question, John. I mean, this is a really exciting time that we're in. I really, I compare it to the advent of the internet or the PC and that artificial intelligence is such a groundbreaking, exciting tool that offers the prospect of increased productivity and really being able to move faster and smarter. But with that, uh, certainly companies have uh, quite a bit to digest and, and try to figure out how this may fit with their business model. And a lot of the things that you know, we're hearing on a routine basis from our customers are gonna be around uh, lack of in-house expertise, you know, bringing in a new solution, and you know, whether or not their talent is, is really going to be able to support the solution. And you know, if we look at an article from IT Pro, 90% of organizations have reported a lack of skills in multiple cloud disciplines. And this has increased over the past three years. So certainly a lot of concern there. Another one that uh, we hear on a routine basis and really crux or central to uh, using an artificial intelligence solution is around data protection and governance. So ensuring that your data is, is protected, that you have uh, you know, categorization, labeling, sensitivity applied. Uh, all these areas are, are really important for companies and, and top concerns. And if we look at a survey from Microsoft, 30% uh, of business decision makers don't actually know where their business critical data resides. So that's an important thing. And one of the things that we're seeing uh, on a consistent basis, as far as what we're hearing from our customers, is that there are so many different AI solutions out there that are available freely for the employees that are making their way into uh, the companies and being used on a routine basis. And this is something that is concerning as well for companies and, and leading them towards developing a generative AI policy that aligns with, with their business. That's, that's an important concern as well. And in addition to that, another thing that we're hearing is really around ethical concerns. And then if the data that is being accessed by the artificial intelligence solution is accessing data that is biased, then those results are going to be returned with biases as well. So that's a big concern. Also, there's several others, you know, including uh, copyright infringement and other uh, legal exposures through using an AI solution. And you know, if we go beyond that, certainly, you know, how to implement 
how to make sure that you adopt and implement a solution that is providing that AI benefit in your company and you're doing it in the right way. So those are some of the biggest concerns that we're hearing on a routine basis from our customers. Yeah, and I know, you know, like you mentioned with the public cloud AI tools, that is a big concern. And that's something that we touched upon in the first webinar on this series. Um, it's just getting, you know, control of the AI tools that your end users are using because they're putting out company information to those tools and you got to find a way to control that. And uh, that kind of leads us right into our next segment. The great segue that I have here for it is our technical readiness assessment. So how can we, Dan, as a company, help prepare our customers for Microsoft 365 Copilot? Yeah, so there's a number of considerations there. The good thing is, is that we do have the talent and subject matter experts on staff to be able to work closely with our customers to understand and, and really help co-design what that su success criteria is and the benefits that can be expected as a result of bringing the AI solution into the organization. And, and when we talk about Microsoft 365 Copilot, there are a number of different areas that our team works with our customers on to really get a better understanding of where there might be gaps or risks. And that starts with utilizing a lot of the tools that are available within the Microsoft 365 admin portal, such as the, configure, the configuration analyzer uh, for Microsoft Purview, otherwise known as CAMP, uh, using the, you know, there are several Microsoft 365 admin consoles for Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, Teams, um, as well as uh, Microsoft Purview itself, looking at uh, information protection policies, sensitivity labels, and data loss uh, prevention uh, policies as well. So what our team does is it, it gets into uh, the Microsoft 365 tenant, and it looks at all these different areas within the Microsoft 365 um, tenant environment and, and analyzes that and builds out a report highlighting uh, things around compliance. Uh, there's a compliance score that we use. There's the secure score that we use um, and, and really surface a lot of that information for the customer to help them understand, you know, what their current state is and help define what that future state should look like based on our expertise and all the work that we've done with many different organizations. And ultimately what we do is we build that into an actionable plan for our customers. And we view us as, as really an extension of their IT team to partner with them directly and help them ultimately turn the corner and adopt the AI solution and get the benefit that they want out of that solution and really put some productivity, um, you know, increase productivity as far as the workforce is concerned, put more time back into their schedules. I mean, one of the things that, that uh, you know, I see as a huge benefit with uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot is being able to effectively be in three places at once by getting transcripts through Teams and uh, getting those action items that may have been assigned to me uh, while I was not able to be on a call. So taking advantage of the technical readiness assessment to really give that, that full view into the areas that need to be incrementally improved or areas that need to be addressed uh, that had been um, uh, lightly touched at this point is something that our team works diligently to surface for our customers. And I think that's key what you mentioned, right? That we're providing, you know, customers with a plan, right? We're gonna go over areas that we have identified that are at risk, what incremental improvements we can recommend towards their tenant. But beyond that, Dan, you know, setting them up for success with the readiness assessment, what next steps can we take to help the customer out on this AI journey afterwards? Yeah, so first off, the, the key here is we, we tailor those recommendations based on what we see with each customer. So based on what we see in the environment, we're going to be able to highlight uh, areas that, that need to be improved. So 
one of the ones that's key is is data loss prevention. So ensuring that uh, sensitive data data is not exposed outside of the company or even in you know between different apart departments within the company. So if we look at uh, you know specifically data loss prevention, that could be um, you know uh, personal information, financial data, uh, health records. Obviously, uh, it would be um, you know a big issue for a healthcare organization if HIPAA information was was released or uh, PII information. So we need to make sure that we're highlighting the data loss prevention uh, incremental improvements that we can directly improve on behalf of the customer through our professional services organization. That's one aspect that we'd look at. Um, another area, like I mentioned, is making sure that, you know, based on uh, department to department, whether it's, you know, finance versus sales, making sure that there's information barriers between the departments to ensure that information is only being accessed by the people that should be accessing it. So, so making sure that the policies are put in place to address the data segregation that may be needed based on a, a specific company use case. Uh, sensitivity labels, that's a big one. So making sure that you know, we, we help put together trainable classifiers to put automation behind how data is categorized, labeled, and uh, those are areas that, that we work directly with our customers on. Uh, another really big one is bridging the Microsoft 365 um, uh, Copilot access to other data sources that may not be directly within the Microsoft 365 tenant. So utilizing Microsoft Graph, utilizing plugins to ensure that you're making that bridge to the data that you want to be able to be searched against with results delivered from a generative AI perspective, but not those that you don't want to be uh, enveloped into the AI solution. And then, you know, as far as, uh, as far as risk is concerned, ensuring that policy is put in place to alert the admins if there is access that, that is going beyond the overall scope to improve the policies and limit that access through triggers and flags. Um, those are some of the areas that we would surface through the technical readiness assessment. And our professional services team has the capabilities and expertise to be able to make these changes from a policy perspective within the Microsoft 365 tenant, essentially preparing that environment for the customer to confidently uh, deploy the copilot, uh, the Microsoft 365 copilot solution. So it's almost like a web of engagement, right? Where it's, you know, different to every customer, but at the center of it all, it starts with that technical readiness assessment that really lines them up for the next stages of success that you branched out with, you know, covering DLP, information barriers, sensitivity labels, et cetera. And all that's going to be, you know, different for the stages that our customers are in with AI. Would you say that's accurate? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, above and beyond that, when we just look at, you know, the overall permissions to the users and groups, making sure that that accurately reflects the needs of the organization, because there, there's something called the Symantec Index within the Microsoft 365 Copilot solution that will go out there and provide you uh, visibility into the content that you're permissioned to access. So ensuring that we also touch on that too from an access perspective is going to be key to ensure that only the appropriate individuals have, that have access to content are receiving what they should have access to. That's great. Yeah. And, and I guess to summarize as well, coming off of this, because I know this is a lot of information for some of our customers here. And, and I mean, it's Copilot for M365. Of course, it's going to be a lot of information because this is, you know, a new boundaries for a lot of our customers going forward. So as far as the deliverables provided to customers that go through the technical readiness assessment, right? What can they expect to receive towards the end of that engagement before moving into those professional service engagements that you talked about? Yeah, so John, they'll receive a comprehensive report outlining all of the different areas that we've discussed today 
and the risks uh, involved if they were just to uh, assign the, the Microsoft 365 Copilot subscriptions today, as well as a plan to help them uh, incrementally improve the environment. And it, it goes into all the different areas of the Microsoft 365 ecosystem, including you know, some of the most important areas that we talked. All that encompasses you know, the, the you know, SharePoint online, Exchange online, Teams, and some of the most prevalently used online services. So the customers will get that, that clarity as far as you know, what are those next steps and how can I you know, complete that journey through to uh, deployment of Microsoft 365 Copilot. That is the deliverable that they'll receive and then continued engagement with the team based on where they want to go next. If they do need that extra hand from a partner like Connection, then we're there to work directly uh, on their behalf to help get everything up to speed and ready for the company or entity to be able to adopt this new solution. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's key, right? In our first webinar series, we really stuck with the the why for Microsoft 365 Copilot and how customers can use it. Our last uh, webinar, our second in this series was on the workshop to really introduce uh, customers to Microsoft 365 Copilot. So it's great to hear on that third step. Uh, you know, again, with this partnership with Connection, we're able to take care of the needs on getting them ready to roll out uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot to their environment. So I guess that leaves just one final question here for you, Dan. If there's one action you'd like to see customers take away from today's webinar, what would that be? Yeah, one action I would say, you know, take the curiosity that you have as far as Microsoft 365 Copilot is concerned and engage us early. Because one of the things that we find is that we speak to a lot of different customers about their uh, aspirations in adopting this type of solution. And we find that customers are in many different uh, phases of the journey. Some are still trying to figure out uh, what the solution is and how it would benefit them. Others have already created that steering committee and understand you know, how this would benefit their company, but they don't know exactly how to uh, operationalize it and put it into place. So the, the biggest thing that I would want anybody watching this take away from this is that, A, you know, we, we've got this. We've been, uh, we've been uh, working alongside uh, many customers at the inception of this, this uh, AI solution. We've got the expertise and subject matter experts to be able to work alongside you and really help you bring that clarity to what that actual success criteria is and what that future state should be and, and help you know, co-design that with you and ultimately help you put it into place. Dan, I couldn't have said it better myself. I definitely am a fan of a more proactive approach rather than a reactive approach, especially when it comes to something as new and exciting as AI. So with this, guys, I'll leave you with some information on the screen. So if you do not have an account manager with us today, the information on the screen is going to get you connected with somebody that can assist you in starting these conversations. And of course, if you do have an account manager, please engage them as soon as possible so we can get these conversations started with you. And the final thing I'll leave you here today with, ladies and gentlemen, is watch out for our final part in this series, which is going to be on Tuesday, October 22nd. And with that, thank you very much for joining. And Dan, thanks for joining as our guest. Appreciate it, everybody.